Hey guys, today I wanted to talk to you about storage. Ever since I've been creating videos for YouTube, I've been keeping my original footage. And since I'm using my Panasonic's Lumix G7, that means I record at 100 megabits per second, which translates into roughly 10 megabytes per second of storage that I need. As you can imagine, that starts counting up after a while. I've always had pretty big storage servers. Uh, ever since we had 40 gigabyte hard disks, I'd, I'd use them for LAN parties and storing my own media and stuff like that. But most of the time when they would fill up, uh, I would just have to reorganize and throw stuff away and then I would have enough space again. But ever since making these videos, well, I want to keep the footage, it just keeps growing and growing. I'm at about five to six terabytes of raw footage now. So it was time to expand. My current server has five times four terabytes in uh, RAID Z1 and four times two terabytes in a mirror or two mirrors actually. So I'm going to replace one of those mirrors with two of these new Iron Wolf 10 terabyte discs. That should keep it satisfied for a little while and then I can replace the other ones. But since I work a lot with storage and discs, uh, both personally and uh, professionally, I've grown accustomed to a, uh, well, a custom, I guess, that I do before starting to use a disc. Um, nowadays, the, with the bigger discs, lots of times discs will have bad sectors, but you won't notice until you hit them. And often, those are at the end of the disc. So if you start using your brand new spanking discs, and you have five of those, for instance, like I did a few years back, and you start using them and filling them up, only once you reach the end and have almost filled them, they start failing. So during my surface scan tests or write and retests of the whole disk I did previously for my current RAID array, two of the five failed. So hadn't I done these checks before installing them, I would have lost my array. So I, I, I wrote an article about that at that time. You can uh, check it out in the card uh, somewhere up there. But I wanted to use this video to take you guys along and show you how you do one of these checks to make sure your discs are perfectly okay before using them. So, let's, uh, let's take a look at these discs. Okay, I took the drives out of their protective packaging. And first thing I notice is that uh, they're quite bulky 3.5 inch drives. If I take an older drive and put it in the same picture, you can clearly see that this drive has well, pretty uh, ridges on the top, while well, this is a completely flat. If we then look at the bottom, we can clearly see the markings of the motor and the PCB and stuff like that. But here, we see that the back is almost completely flat like the front is, or the top is, and the PCB actually has components on the inside, otherwise they would stick out too much. So, these new drives are helium filled drives with seven platters while um well this is actually a two terabyte drive so i believe it has four platters of 500 gigs um but the more interesting thing is this is a 5400 rpm drive while these are 7200 rpm drives this one has 32 megabytes of cache i believe maybe it's on there yeah, 32 megabytes of cache, while these newer drives are 7200 RPM and have 256 gigab um, gigabytes, megabytes of cache. So these should be a whole lot faster, but because they're helium filled and have less friction and have a bigger platter density, it actually uses less power than the old drive. So I thought that was interesting. So. Let me get my test system ready and create a USB stick with the Seagate tools, because these are Seagate drives. And let's uh, follow along together and see if we can test, uh, test the whole disk. Okay, so I just made my USB stick, but boy Seagate, 
why did you have to make that so hard? So in, uh, I guess in layman's terms, and I'll try and fill it in over here. Let me focus this for whatever reason. Um, basically, you have to download the C tools for DOS. I'll have a link in the description. And uh, once you download that, you unpack the ISO file because who writes CDs anymore? So in that ISO file, there is an IMA file. You rename that IMA file to .img, and then you download Win32 Disk Imager, and you write that IMG file to a little USB stick. But why does it have to be that hard? That's just stupid. Anyway, I have it on the stick, so uh, let's have a look. So I took one of my old computers, I put the USB stick in, and well, I basically just put one of the hard disks on top of it. Um, it doesn't really matter what specifications the old computer has, but if it has more than one type of SATA controller, I find that it's mostly best to go with Intel controllers because the software knows how to handle those and interacts with those the best. So, let's uh, turn on the system and see what we get. So, after you have the USB stick and the disk installed, boot your computer and go into the BIOS. This is uh, normal for this motherboard. But we do see that the disk is being detected, so that's good. So, the thing you need to do, because we're using a DOS utility, is you have to go to your SATA configuration, and I recommend using uh, Intel controllers. Um, but we need to put it in IDE mode. Normally, you'd run in H AHCI mode, but because we're using a DOS tool, we need to be in IDE mode. Okay. Then we go to my boot override and I select the USB stick. Yeah. It should automatically boot into the Seagate tool. There we go. Let me sure make sure that's in focus. So let's uh, accept. Let's see if it finds the disk. Okay, it does. Uh -huh. Smart has not been tripped. That's good. So let's first do a basic test and then a short test. This is basically the test you do to make sure your disk is okay. And most often a short test will be enough to detect problems. But in our case, because we want to verify all the sectors, we're going to do a long test after this. But be prepared, the long test can take up to 10 hours or something like that, depending on the size of your disk. I don't have a capture card, so I have to capture it like this. So I hope it's visible on the screen. Okay. Okay. It says passed, so it looks like this disk is okay. But as I said, we want to make sure, so for each of the disks you purchased, in my case it's two, we're also going to do a long test. As I said, this long test is going to take a while. So, it started at 19.01, and um, well, I'll get back to you when it's done. Hey guys. Um... I've been checking on and off on um, the extensive or long test and uh, it's about 12 o'clock now and I saw the test reach about 25 or 27 percent but then I just came back and there's these weird green characters on the screen but it doesn't really show what's what the problem is so I'm going to restart my test and uh, hopefully the next time it fares better. If it doesn't, I'll uh, test the other hard disk and see if the same problem happens. If it doesn't, I'm going to conclude this one's bad. But let's not be hasty with that. Okay, as you can see the disk check finished, 
but this is a different tool than I was using before. Well, during the testing with the original Seagate tool, I kept getting errors at some point during the testing. And I didn't think it was the disks, but the tool itself. So I looked around online for some different tools, and I tried some different variants, and in the end I found HDD Regenerator, which can also do a complete surface scan, which this is the result of. And here you can see it did it at 183 megabytes a second, so this is a pretty fast disk, because this is the average that it took, and the disk is always faster in the beginning and slower at the end. It, it has to do with how the platters are spaced. Anyhow, we had no delays, no sectors that were bad, and this disk seems perfectly okay. It took 14 and a half hours, but now at least I know I can fill up the disk without any issues, and I can take it into production. Of course, I still have to test the second disk, so I'll do that now. Okay, and that is kind of the end of this video. So, basically the clue of this video is test your disks fully be before you start using them for your intended purpose. If you have bad sectors at the end of the disk, you want to replace them before you use them, or you might lose your data. Simple as that. Now, these new 10 terabyte disks uh, make it a little bit harder because seemingly uh, Seagate's own tool crashes on it. And I tried some other variants like Spinrite or uh, some other disk checkers, but they either wouldn't find the disks or uh, couldn't detect the whole size. So I ended up with HD Regenerator, the free version, because I don't want to fix any b bad sectors, I just want to find them. And that worked well. Um, as I was mentioned, I wrote an article about this before in the, in the past. I'll have that linked uh, somewhere over here and also in the description. And if you have any questions or comments, let me know in, well, in the comments. And I hope you like this video. Uh, maybe give it a share for someone who also does a lot with storage or recently bought new hard disks. And I hope to see you back in the future. Bye-bye.